Today we're going to learn how to measure TA using a titration stand and a pH meter. No more looking at the little drops of indicator solution and swirling it, trying to see an endpoint in a red wine. I have a terrible time with that. We're going to actually show you how to, a very simple and very effective professional method to measure your TA, total acidity, using a pH meter and just titrating some 0.2 normality sodium hydroxide into your sample until your pH meter reads 8.2. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to calibrate our pH meter with our buffer solutions that we have. You should have 4 and 7.0 buffer. How we do this, how we calibrate the pH meter, is of course we connect our electrode to the pH meter. Basically, I'm going to go ahead and use my portable meter. This has got a B and C connector, so when the electrode is finally spent, it doesn't read well anymore. I can replace it and continue to use the pH meter. We always remove the little plastic vial cover that protects the electrode. Just a little housekeeping. There's a glass porous electrode on the end of this pH meter, and it is delicate. You don't ever want to touch it with your fingers. The oils from your fingers will plug the porosity of the meter. So turn your meter on, rinse it in a little bit of water. We need to rehydrate it. If it's been idle for a long time, you might want to stick it in some storage solution and let it set. But if you've kept it in storage solution, you should be ready to calibrate. You can see the electrode here. We've removed the little vial that had the storage solution and protection. We're going to put it into our 4.01 solution here and dial it in to calibrate this meter. You can see it's reading about 4.3, 4.1. There, on this particular port, this particular pH meter, there are two different spots for dialing in the pH. One is for the low end of the scale, and one is for the high end of the scale. In this case, it's 4.01 in the pink solution. So we want to dial until we see 4.01 here. Turn this screw until you read the appropriate reading on your meter for the buffer solution that you're using. There we go, 4.01. And that was, again, on the particular meter, it was this slope, the second slope. Now what we're going to do is measure the high end. We're going to take and rinse our electrode in. This is just water. And we're going to move it over here to our 7.01 buffer solution and calibrate at the high end of the scale. And as you can see, it's climbing. Give it a little bit of swirl and let it get up there. And we'll see how much adjustment we need to make to this electrode. This electrode looks like it's been hydrated fairly well, so it does, it's going right to the range. And you know what? That is accurate enough. Notice how it's slowed down considerably in, in stabilizing. So now we would call that calibrated. We're going to analyze this red wine. It's a 2006 Cabernet Sauvignon from Livermore Valley. We're going to measure the TA on it. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a 15 milliliter sample of wine and put it into this little 50 milliliter beaker that we've got here. And we do that by drawing into our pipette, holding the pipette to the bottom of the glass, and then slowly letting it out until we hit 15, we get a reading of 15 on this pipette. And you can see that this is going down now, and I'll stop it when I hit 15. 16, 15, there we are. We'll put that in our, in our beaker. Next, we need 20 cc's of distilled water, which I happen to have in this glass here. We'll do the same thing. Draw up 20 cc's into the pipette. Holding the pipette against the bottom of the glass slows down the drainage until you get to the right location. There you go, 20 cc's. Now we're going to here. Now our sample is ready. The next thing that I want to do is I want to add the sodium hydroxide, 0.2 normal normality, to our burette. And how I'm going to do that is make, first I'm going to make sure that the stopcock is off. I'm going to have it on the set up to the off position. That's when it's crosswise across the burette. And I'm going to fill in about oh, 10 cc's is all that we're going to have of the solution. I want to make sure that I open the stopcock and get rid of any air bubbles that might be in this tube here. Just briefly, I'm going to pour it back into the 
file that it came in and then set this aside. And keep a cloth handy in the event that you ever make any messes, you can just kind of clean this up. Now since our pH meter is calibrated, what I'm going to do now is I have a um, little stirrer mechanism here. It's a little magnetic stirrer. It's portable, designed just for this type of an application. If you don't have one of these, you can swirl this with your hand, but it really is helpful to go ahead and put the little pill in there and use this magnetic stirrer when you're doing titrations of this nature. And what you do is you basically throw the little magnetic stir rod into the glass onto the magnetic stirrer and then you turn it on. And it creates a vortex in there, which makes it much easier to uh, uh, do your titrations. All right, next we're going to take our electrode from our pH meter. And we're going to titrate, which means drip. To drip means titrate from the burette into our vial. Now, before we do that, we need to record the amount of solution that's in the, the electrode, I mean, excuse me, in the burette here. And we're at 4.6, 4.6 milliliters is the starting point in this burette. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to titrate with the 0.2 normality sodium hydroxide until our pH meter attains a reading of 8.2. At that time, we'll measure the amount of sodium hydroxide used and that equates exactly to the amount of TA in our wine sample. So here I'm putting the electrode into the solution and I'm keeping it out of the way of the burette so that I can drip the sodium hydroxide directly into the sample but not onto the electrode. So you'll notice that I'm slowly turning the stopcock of the burette until we start our drips. And I'll get to where I get a nice steady drip and then watch the uh, pH meter as it starts to climb towards 8.2. So we're slowly titrating the sodium hydroxide into our wine sample and watching the pH meter as it climbs towards 8.2. Now as it gets closer to 8.2, we'll back off the drip rate so that it slows down so we don't overshoot. As you can see, we're climbing now. We're at 4.3 and, and proceeding beyond that now. We're all making sure that the electrode from the pH meter is always submerged in the solution and that the little magnetic stirrer is doing our work, it's swirling the glass, although you can do it by hand. Here we go, we are now crossing 5 on the pH meter. When we hit 7, I'm going to slow down the drip rate, the feed rate of the sodium hydroxide, to avoid overshooting our number. And remember, we started at 4.6 milliliters in the burette. Now crossing, climbing up towards six. Approaching seven. Now I'm going to slow down the feed. Seven point seven. Eight. We're not eight. We're going to eight point two to finish our calculation. It's like one more drip might do that. Maybe two. And we're there. That's Close enough. That's how it works. 8.2. So now we need to record the amount of sodium hydroxide consumed in the burette to reach a pH of 8.2. And I'm, we started at 4.6 and we are at 11.1. So we used 6.5 milligrams, excuse me, milliliters or cc's of sodium hydroxide to reach our pH of 8.2, that's a 6.5 grams per liter. It's because 4.6 from the 11.1 um, residual equals 6.5. So that's how you measure TA with a pH meter. Basically, is you take a titration stand, you fill your bread with 0.2 normality sodium hydroxide. If you have a magnetic stirrer, well, we sell them, but you can get them at other places as well. It's very helpful. Otherwise, just swirl it. Put 15 cc's of your wine sample into the glass. Put 
20 cc's of distilled water into the glass and then titrate until your pH, pH meter reaches 8.2. Make sure that your pH meter is calibrated, as always, before um, doing the analysis. And that's, in our case, we started with a, a reading of 4.6. We result, resolved to 11.1, and we wound up with a reading of TA of 6.5 grams per liter in this wine analysis. So, cheers.